It is so great to be with you over this next hour for another program of Hope Today. Thank you so much for joining us. Our prayer is that your spirit will be encouraged with these words and songs. God is God of all. Why then do we often think that God should be who we think he is? God has revealed himself to us in creation and the universes. More specific than that, he has revealed himself to us in his word, the Bible. As Psalm 8 asks, Why is God even mindful of man? Listen for these answers with Pastor Tom Cullen in the moments ahead. But in the next segment, won't you sit back and enjoy the inspirational songs as brought to us by Mac Wigfield. Gospel music coming up on Hope Today. Let's begin with the Kingdom Heirs. They are looking for the depths of the Father's love. I thought I understood the love of Jesus. I thought I knew what He had saved me from. I thought I could conceive the spanning cover when He came to earth, born the perfect one. But then I took another look at Calvary. Never seen such pain and agony. It would have been enough to die for angels, but I can't believe He gave His life for me. I've tried, I've tried but I still can't find the depths of the Father's love. Place you can look, but I couldn't find an end to the friend from above. I've searched, I've searched all over this earth, but there's nothing that compares to his touch. I've tried, but I still can't find the depths of the Father's love. The deepest, darkest ocean has a bottom. Tallest, greenest mountain has a top. The widest, driest desert has a border. These have an end, but not the love of God. For the awesome, loving Father has no boundary. Nothing can contain. To redeem the lowest sinner I know because He reached way down to me Well, I've tried, I've tried but, but I still can't find The depths of a Father's love Yes, I've looked I've looked every place you can look But I couldn't find an end to the friend from above I have searched I've searched all over this earth But there's nothing that compares to His touch I've tried, but I still can't find the depths of the Father's love. I've tried, but I still can't find every place you can go. I've searched all over this earth. I've tried, oh, I still can't find the depths of the Father's And that love is an inviting love. Here are the Mullins. There's a wedding supper plan, one not known to common man. The invitation stands for all to come and dine. And now the choice, it's up to you to be a part of the chosen few. So make your plans today. Oh 
It has to wait until the bride is called away. We'll be united with our Lord to ever stay. Now we have an invitation. It's a waiting reservation when the saints from every So then, what is this invite that comes to us from Jesus himself? Well, among other things, he said this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Doesn't sound bad, does it? Do you need rest today? Here's Sweetwater Revival. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, all of you. Jesus, come to Jesus, all of you who burdened be. When our hearts are broken and when we need a friend, when our yoke grows heavy. Just come to Him and rest. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, all of you who burdened be. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, all of I could sing this final one for you myself, but perhaps you'd rather hear it from the Blackwood Brothers. You can find what I found. I found what I used to be a missing. I found what I used to be a missing. I found joy, so boy, you better listen. I found joy, so boy, you better listen. I found peace down in my soul, so I want you to know that if you want to be what I found when I found I was lost You can get what I got when you get to the cross You can have what I have and you'll have all you need You can find what I found when you finally believe I found what it means to be forgiven I found what it means to be forgiven I found I could die and still be living You can get 
what I got When you get to the cross You can have what I have And you'll have all you need You can find what I found When you finally believe At the risk of being redundant Did I mention I'm so glad you're with us on Hope Today. Perhaps one of the best cards to receive in the mail is one that starts with the words, You're invited. It tells you that you're wanted and welcome. It's an offer that God gives you all through Scripture and one which we see articulated by Joseph in our text today. Stay with us as we celebrate the truth. You're invited. Here's Travis Cottrell with Keith and Kristen Getty singing, Come ye sinners. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. I will rise and go to Jesus. He'll embrace me. Laden 
In the Old Testament book of Genesis, we read the amazing story of Joseph, the favored son of Jacob, who was sold by his brothers into slavery, but who through God's grace is able to navigate through accusations and difficulties so that he becomes prime minister of Egypt. And we've seen in our previous programs how his brothers were brought before him and they don't recognize him. After all, it's been over 20 years since they last laid eyes on him, and they never in their wildest dreams believed that he would become prime minister of Egypt. Finally, in chapter 45, Joseph reveals his identity to the baffled, guilt-ridden brothers. The text tells us that they are terrified at Joseph's presence. Is it any wonder? They had committed a great crime against him, tried to completely erase him from the family, and desired his death. And now he stands before them with all power and authority, with every right to make them pay for their crimes. And what does he do? He gives them grace and invites them to himself. Come close to me, he says. What a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture tells us that it was because of our sin that he died on the cross. We were the cause of his death. And when he rose from the dead, he took his place of power and authority and has every right to make us pay for our sin. Yet what does he do? He gives us grace and invites us to himself. And the Bible says that our Lord's death was not only because of us, but instead of us. His death was sacrificial, and through faith in his death and resurrection, we are forgiven and given new life with God now and forever. So instead of quivering in fear before him, we are told to come and are welcomed with the assurance that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Mark and Sarah sing, Boldly I Approach. By grace alone, somehow I stand Where even angels fear to tread Invited by redeeming love Before the throne of God above He pulls me close With nail-scarred hands into his everlasting arms When condemnation grips my heart And Satan tempts me to despair I hear the voice that scatters fear The great I am the
After Joseph reveals his identity to his brothers in Genesis chapter 45, he reassures them of his good intentions by giving them an invitation. Come close to me, he says. It is a truth that God offers the same invitation to you and to me. All through the Bible, we see God inviting men and women to come to him to share in the great feast of blessings that he has prepared for them. He invites Adam and Eve to come out of hiding and into his wonderful presence. He invites the people of God to come and experience his forgiveness, even though their sins are like scarlet in the book of Isaiah. In chapter 55 of that same book, God invites his people to abandon that which does not ultimately satisfy and take him in as one would a fine meal. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. God is always inviting you. When he came in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And again, if anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. Come, all you who are thirsty. The wonder of this invitation to come to God should not be lost on us. It is amazing. Like Joseph's brothers, we haven't done anything to warrant such an invitation. In fact, we have acted in a way that would give God every cause to turn his back on us and forget about us completely. But he doesn't do that. Instead, he invites us to trust him, to believe in his son Jesus and know forgiveness of sin through faith in him. You're invited. Won't you respond today? Matthew Ziginus sings the invitation with Come to the Waters. Come to the waters See from our Lord a river flows Drink of his mercy Draw from its depths and be made whole
Our hymn today, like many other hymns known as invitational hymns, owe their recognition and appearance in our songbooks to the revival meetings of Dwight L. Moody and Ira D. Sankey. These hymns were an essential part of the revival experience. Following the powerful sermon of the evangelist D. L. Moody, the invitational song became the vehicle that allowed the attendees to contemplate the message and respond to the gospel. John Stockton was born in 1813 to Presbyterian parents. In his early 20s, while attending a camp meeting, John was converted to Methodism. He became a licensed preacher in 1844 and a member of the New Jersey Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. He was active in ministry not only as a preacher, but also as a musician, song composer, and hymn writer. Ill health caused him to withdraw from active pastoral ministry in 1874, at which time he began to compile and publish gospel hymn books. It was at this same time that Stockton worked with Moody and Sankey in their 1874 meetings in Philadelphia. He wrote several songs for use in these revival meetings, including our hymn today, Only Trust Him. John Stockton was to suddenly pass away only three years later. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. John Stockton says, Only trust him now, for he will save you now. Hear this invitation to know Jesus Christ as David Phelps sings, Only Trust Him. There's mercy in the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him.
Our God is an inviting God. All through Scripture, we witness Him inviting people to Himself, to have faith in Him, to trust His Word and believe in His Son for forgiveness of sin and eternal life. I'll never forget the time when our adult son John invited me to go with him on a holiday to Iceland. I couldn't believe it. He wanted to travel and spend a week with me? You have to understand that though my son and I look alike and we share some qualities, we are different people. He's a fun, freewheeling, stay-up-till-all-hours-of-the-night young man. I'm a staid, stick-to-the-routine, go-to-bed-by-ten old guy. And he wanted to go on a trip with me? How can this be, I thought. God's invitation to us may seem a bit like that. Even though he came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, we are very different from him. He is so holy and we are so unholy. He is so pure and we are so impure. He is from heaven and we are often so earthly minded. Why would God want to spend time with us? Yet there it is. God persists to invite you to himself in spite of the differences. And the only reason that can be given is that God invites you to himself because he loves you and wants to spend time with you. And you say, how can I be sure? I know it because he sent his son to die for you and for me. Scripture says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's love. And that's why he invites you to himself. What joy. Here's Mac Powell with River of Life. Genesis chapter 45, Joseph says to his brothers, come to me. Do you know that many years later, Jesus says the exact same thing, come to me. In fact, he tells a story about a man who sends out invitations to a great banquet. 
and the people whom he invites give all sorts of excuses as to why they can't come to the feast. One says, I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. It's an excuse. Have you ever bought a house without seeing it first? Another says, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Again, another poor excuse. Have you ever bought a car without first taking it for a test drive? This guy has bought five yoke of oxen without trying them out. How does he know they won't pull to the left? The last one looks at the invitation and says, I just married a wife and cannot come. Sorry, what? Why can't he and his wife come to the feast? Each one invited makes an excuse. And they're pretty poor ones to boot. They seem to be consumed with such trivia. But here's the thing. The people making the excuses don't think the cow, the field, and the wedding are trivial. They are finding their worth in those things. Listen, Jesus is giving us a word of warning. Don't miss the invitation from God to come to him. Nothing in this world is worth as much as being with the one who loves you to such a degree that he gave his life for you. Here's City Harmonic singing of the great wedding day in Holy. This is a story of the Son of God Hanging on a cross for me But it ends with a bride and groom In a wedding by a glassy sea Oh, death, where is your sting? Cause I've been there singing Holy 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 The
You're listening to Hope Today. The psalmist writes about his experience of God, saying, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. So Eliza King sings, God sees me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where could I hide from your face? Knowing that the reaches of all time and space are held in your hands. Up in the heavens you meet me, and down with the dead you've been there. God, you are just so English comedian Michael McIntyre tells of a day when he came down the stairs and there on the floor was the morning mail. And in the center of it all was an envelope that radiated. It seemed like all the other males simply stood apart from it as it lay there giving off this unworldly glow. He picked it up and it had a big red seal on the back of it. He excitedly opened it and lo and behold, it was from the royal palace. He was invited to have an audience with the queen. And you can imagine the thrill he felt, being one of her royal subjects. He was chosen to have an audience with her. Well, what did he do? 
Did he throw the invite on the desk and ignore it? No, he rushed to his computer and typed a quick reply saying he would be honored to be there. My friends, as wonderful as it must have been to be invited by the queen to have an audience with her, you have been invited by the king of kings to come to him, to trust him, to know him, to taste his love for you and know his victory over sin and death for you in the person of Jesus Christ. Hear the truth. You're invited. Will you respond? If so, sing along with Nicole Nordman in Just As I Am. I wondered how to come to you. I did not dare believe it true that you regard the orphaned ones, beloved daughters, worthy sons. The broken and the barren too I heard could find some rest in What kind of love in injury's place Would leave in the stead the stain of grace So I come in sorrow God invites all to come to Him. You can trust Him. You can be victorious. You can taste His love. You can know God. He already knows you. We pray that you will seek Him. You may want to hear this program or a previous one again, or you may want to share a program with a friend. You can do all that by visiting www.lightandlife.ca. Once again, that is the word light the letter N, and the word life. Through the website, you can send Pastor Tom and our team a note. We would love to hear your story. Hope Today is produced at Straight Pass Studio. We look forward to being with you and your friends next time for another program of hope. Until then, keep looking ahead. Jesus is coming again. <laughs>